Welcome back to Insights. And today we are talking about taking a look at why are Satanists Satanists? So we're not talking about here just people that might dabble in the occult a little bit like with a Ouija board or something. Why are people knowing who Satan is and knowing who Jesus is, why are they choosing Satan? So I'm going to take a couple minutes and share three reasons. The first reason is this, is that they believe that Jesus was a real person, but that Satan defeated Jesus at the cross. In other words, Jesus never rose from the dead. In other words, Satan has these people deceived to believe that the end of the story was the cross and not Sunday morning at the resurrection. Reason number two. There's an intrigue with power, some sort of spiritual, supernatural power that can be had through following Satan. And a third reason why some people choose to follow Satan is because they believe that their life is better in that vein or mode than it would be with any other option. Okay, so we have three things going on here. We have a liar deception by the enemy. We have this power thing going on and we have a belief that this way life is better. Okay, so first, uh, on that first area, I'm going to put up scriptures that clearly talk about Jesus' resurrection. And if you searched on YouTube and this video came up and you're actually in Satanism or dabbling with it, I want you in particular to take a careful look at these scriptures because they teach that the end of the story is not the cross, but that Jesus rose from the dead and actually defeated Satan and who many simply call Lucifer. So Jesus clearly uh, rose from the dead. He's coming back and he's going to judge Satan and his demons and followers. So the story will go on into the future and we want to leave that lifestyle. Secondly, Within the body of Christ, we need to talk about this power thing because there's so many scriptures that talk about God's power and God's power moving through us. And Paul talked about this quite a bit. So why is it that people look at people within the church and they say, I need to go to some other belief system to find power? You know, it's, a, it's an indictment on us, actually, as believers. It, it makes me think of 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 5 that says, that people hold a form of godliness but deny its power or they have godliness but without the power. So I think as Christians, we need to look at ourselves in the mirror and say, is God's power on display in us and through us? Paul talked about this over and over in Philippians 3.10. He said he wanted to know the power of the resurrection. In other words, the very power that brought Christ out of the grave and, and ruling and reigning. Paul says, I want to know that. I want to experience that. I want to see that. But then he says he wants that for all believers in Ephesians chapter 1, that we would all know the power of the resurrection. We'd see this kind of power in our daily lives. In Acts chapter 1 verse 8, a very common verse that talks about that when we receive power, we'll go out and be as witnesses. And the book of Acts talks about what happened to the first century church when they got connected with the power of God. 1 Corinthians 4.20, which I've shared many times, says that the kingdom of God is not about words, but about power. And so what I'm advocating for is rather than lost people having to go look for power within the satanic realm, the occultic realm, the spiritist realm, that they would see a true, clean, wonderful, glorious version or form of power through us as the living God meets with us and moves through us. Now, third, uh, this whole area of, of a lifestyle. I hope, too, as believers, we can model a more peaceful, powerful, uh, joyful, lifestyle that we have in Christ is the fruit of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit is manifesting through us. So I remember ministering to one person in particular who had gone somewhat down this path of Satanism. And this person was saying, why should I follow Christ? What would he do for me? Why should I want this demonic realm to leave me? This is what I know and I really believe this is better than following 
Christ. So we have to come through this deception and, and like a passage like John 10.10 10 comes to mind that really the enemy might try to give you some sort of benefits in some ways, but in the end he just wants to throw you under the bus because he's here to steal, kill, and destroy people where Jesus says that he's here to give life and life abundantly. Now, as believers, we need to be in that mode of living and walking in Christ that the Holy Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit, is being manifested in us and through us. It's not, not us trying harder to be loving, joyful, peaceful, etc. It's actually the Holy Spirit in us and through us manifesting himself as love, as joy, as peace, as we choose to follow Christ and, and to, to do his will. So in closing, I just simply want to say this that, again, you might have searched on YouTube for Satanism and you're surprised to find this video. I want to challenge you not to go down the dark path of Luciferianism or Satanism, which is the same thing. I want to, I want to challenge you that Christ rose from the dead, that the true power that will change lives, your life, change communities, change our nation, that power is found in Christ. And then last, Christ and following him, it is the life that brings uh, the, the streams of living water, the life of God, in other words, in us and through us that we have an overflow and there is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So that is why people that choose Satanism are Satanists and that we want to know the truth, the opposite of, of that and why we need to follow the living God. I look forward to being with you next week on Insights. <music>